Hello and welcome to today's lesson here at the Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. We are located at 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37403. Good evening beloved saints. Thank you for being tuned in with us on our Wednesday Bible study. Wednesday Bible study this January the 12th, January the 12th, 2022. Thank the Lord for another time that he has allowed us to come together to study the Holy Word of God. So I pray that you have your workout gear. Those who were at church Sunday, they would understand what, I'm, what I mean by that, our workout gear. Hope you got your Bible and your pad and pen and and we're ready to dive in the Word of God and see what God will give us on this Wednesday Bible study. We're going to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. And we'll begin at verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 4. And we'll begin at verse 1. So as you're turning there, again I want to thank the saints for how the Lord has led many of our saints to come to worship on Sunday, on our Sunday worship. We began promptly at 11 o'clock on Sundays. So I welcome each one of you to come and partake and be a part of our worship experience on on Sundays at 11 o'clock. Uh, the Lord has shown up blessing us with his wind of favor and uh, he's blessing us mightily. Uh, he's adding to God's house and the Lord is just doing miraculous things beyond what we expect here in God's house. So we want to thank the God, thank God for the saints who are who are uh, led of the Lord to come and worship on Sundays. I've asked the saints to sow seed to other saints and encourage the other saints to come to God's house for worship. We take the precautionary measures as, as always, and we're going to continue to do so. So I've asked the saints to sow seed and. I'm going to sow seed as well. This is being one of the means by which I'm sowing seed. If the Lord is leading you and giving you a comforting spirit, come and, and worship with us on our Sunday morning worship at the 11 o'clock hour. It would be a sure enough blessing to see each one of your souls in God's house to worship and hear what God gives us from His Holy Word. You ought to be at Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and starting at verse 1. And again, we're going to dive into the Word of God and see what God has given us. As many of you are aware, are aware, you've heard me say a number of times here since the Lord has blessed us to enter into 2022 that for me personally, as a pastor and as a servant of God, I'm going to do better pertaining to the things of God. That's, that's, that's my heart's desire as a servant of God to do better. Uh, we taught on last week what it means to be a doer, not only a hearer of the Word of God, doer to, a, to, to achieve and to complete what God has called us to do. In tonight's lesson, we're going to look here in the Old Testament, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, what it is, the, the, the directions that have been given to the body of Christ, the church, the church, uh, those who God has set apart, those who God has chosen. What, what it is God has called us to do. And Deuteronomy, here in chapter 4, Deuteronomy, God is, is using Moses to give exhortation to the children of Israel to be obedient to God's commands and his statutes and his judgments, to obey what God says. And Moses is doing this with urgency. And as, as the man of God, as the pastor of the house here, uh, the under shepherd here at Greater Friendship, God has given me an urgency to encourage the body of Christ, the church, the ecclesia, those who are called out to, to, to be diligent, be diligent, to show that you care in your actions, not what we say in our actions. Show that we care about what God is calling us to do and to be conscientious or mindful of what we do. Mindful of what God has called us to do as the people of God, to, to think Again, we say quite often here in the midst of our church body, Christians ought to be, must be thinkers and rememberers. That's what being conscientious is about. Just being mindful of what God has called us to do. So we'll see here in, in this lesson 
what God, what God, what God, through the man of God, but it goes back to God, what God commands, the church, the body, the gathering, the local gathering that God is assembled together, what we are to do. I was reading the other night, I woke up early in the morning, and I, a lot of times in the early in the mornings I wake up and I read, and I, I, I was reading this piece talking about uh, the generation of millenniums and how there there's a drove of millenniums that are going away from what they refer to as the traditional church. And as I read that, I asked the Lord, Lord, give me some insight to share with my people because I always want to teach biblically those whom God has given me as the under shepherd to teach correctly. And when I read that, and they said how the millenniums are going away from what they view as the traditional church, I said, let me see what, what does it mean to be traditional? Well, when you talk about, talk about being traditional, that, from a standpoint of being long established or what's been passed on from generation to generation as far as customs and, and traditions and, and beliefs that have been passed on. And, and I was looking at that and I said, okay, I can gra gra grasp that. Friendship and body of Christ, church. I want you to understand who we are. There are those who might view us as traditional. I view the church of God, the body of Christ, the ecclesia, as the Bible church. The Bible church. I look at when people say traditional church, they are looking not to conform and obey what God says concerning his word towards our actions. So if you don't, if there are those who don't agree with what God says from the word of God, and there are those who do conform and agree and strive to abide by what God says, then you'll look at, you'll look upon as being traditional. But I want to tell you who we are. We're biblical. We're Bible. The church, the, the church of Jesus Christ who follows and adheres, and you're going to hear me say that often, we adhere to the word of God. And we stand boldly on the truth of God's word. And if there are those who want to say that's traditional because what we teach and preach in accordance with the word of God that doesn't set well with what their fleshly desires are, then they can view that as traditional all they want to. We are Bible church, biblical church. We go to the precepts, the statutes, the teachings, the commandments of God. And this is what God is sharing with Moses here in Deuteronomy chapter 4 to encourage and exhort the children of Israel, the church, the ecclesia. The word ecclesia is a Greek word and it, 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 it's translated to the English church as an assembly. Uh, those who are called out, those who are set apart by God, those who are gathered together by God in obedience to the word of God. And the church Understand this, the church of God, the ecclesia, is not denominational. A dom denominational is a subgroup of people that have their own traditional ways and customs and then they abide by their denominational order. We abide, the church, now the church abides by, we abide by what God says through his word. Yes, our pastor, Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. That does not make me a Baptist in, as far as denomination. I am a Christian. When people ask me out and about, I've had this ask me when I was in the hospital, what's your denomination? I tell them I'm Christian. Yeah, I understand it, but what's your denomination? I'm Christian. I abide by the word of God. Denominations will send you to hell because you start conforming and adhering to denominational standards rather than adhering and conforming to God's word. It's God's word that saves. It's the word of God is what instructs us. That's why the word of God says, order my step in your words, O Lord. Not order my step in a denominational creed or decree. It says, order my steps in your word. So understand this, the church, the body of believers, we are Christians and we abide by the word of God whether you attend a place that's 
a Baptist place, a Methodist place, Episcopalian place, a Lutheran place, Presbyterian place, whatever. There are Christians in all those churches that go by those names, but do not conform to a denominational creed. We conform to the word of God. Look what takes place here in chapter 4 of Deuteronomy chapter 4. Moses here, God has allowed, in the previous chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 3, God has allowed Moses to view the promised land. And from our previous teachings from the word of God, Moses was disobedient in what God told him to do about uh, approaching us a rock to give water to the children of Israel who were murmuring and complaining. God said to Moses to speak to the rock. Well, Moses, in his anger against the children of Israel, he struck the rock that God spoke, told him to speak to. Spoke, he struck the rock twice. And by doing so, by disobeying God, his punishment was physically he would not enter into the promised land that God had given his people. Moses is with God. He's with God in eternity. But physically, he was not allowed to go into the promised land that God gave. He, 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 he allowed Joshua to be brought up to do so. But Moses is still the man of God who is instructing at this point. Here in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 1. And the word of God says, Now therefore, Moses is giving exhortation to, again to being obedient, church, body of Christ, ecclesia, he says, now for, therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do. Remember, last week we talked about not only being a hearer, but a doer. Doer means to achieve and to complete. He says, for to do them that ye may live. That's physical live, physical living, as well, he's given as the chosen people of God spiritual life. But to physically live, he says that ye may live physically and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. What God has told them to take possession. And Moses is saying, and he's, Moses is not talking theoretically. Because I just told you physically, Moses was not going to be able to go into the promised land. But he said to those who, are, who God has assembled together to hear what God has told Moses to tell the people. He says, hearken, take heed, be attentive, listen, take heed to what God's instructions are, what God's laws and commandments are, that you might live. And if you remember in the previous lessons when we were in Psalms 106, we walked through a various, uh, various passages of Scripture in Deuteronomy, in Numbers, in Exodus. And here he refers back when he says live, because in verse 2, he says, in verse 2, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish. The word diminish means to take anything away, off, anything away from from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you and Moses commanded off the auspice of what God has commanded Moses to tell the children of Israel again he says in verse 3 your eyes remember what I said about the teachings that we had in Deuteronomy Numbers and Exodus he says in verse 3 your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor for all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. You remember Baal Peor, that's idol worship. How they worship an idol God from Balaam. And God destroyed 24,000 men. You remember the lesson? He's destroyed, he killed 24,000 men because they worship an idol God. And, 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 and Moses is reminding them. He's making them to think. And to remember, he says, again, verse 2, don't add unto the word of God. That's over in the book of Revelation. We in Deuteronomy, but that same teaching as the, as, the, as the word of God closes out in Revelation, says the same thing. Do not add unto the word which I command you. And come on, remember, Moses is commanding off the authority of God, which I command ye, neither shall ye diminish aught 
from it. Take nothing away from it. That ye may keep God, the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you. So, don't worry about what folks say about that's a traditional church. We're a biblical church. People who want to aspire with that traditional mindset, they want to add to the word of God to fit them, or they want to take away from the word of God to fit them, to fit their lifestyle. They don't want to be told you're wrong in accordance to the word of God. They don't want to bow to what the word of God says to do and not to do. So that becomes traditional. So you go away. That's a dangerous thing, church. And the church, I tell you, the church will not do. The church, the ecclesia, will not go away from the word of God. Nor will we add or diminish anything in the word of God. We will stick to the word of God as written. And as we do so, we hearken. I'm talking about the ecclesia. And as we hearken to what God commands, we do. Look at verse 4. He says, But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive. Every one of you this day. Again, remember the 24,000 who worship Baal Peor, the idol worshiper. 24,000 God killed. But Moses is reminding him. <laughs> Moses is making, making them think. He says, But ye that did cleave unto the Lord held fast unto the Lord your God are physically alive. Every one of you this day. That's what I'm saying to you. To you beloved saints, to the church, to the ecclesia, to the gathering of people that God has set apart. Doing it God's way works. Every time. Going about it the way God says do it, it works. Don't get caught up in the values and the traditions of this world or of a denomination. Do it the way the word of God says. It works. You live. You live. And we live life more abundantly. You live a life of freedom, a life of joy, a life of peace, a life that God showers his grace and mercy upon you. I want us to understand this day that the Lord has given us here on January the 12th, 2022, and any other days beyond this. For God's people, God has given us everything we need, body of Christ church, to live, to live a life of Christ. Living for Christ is the best thing. That a soul can do. Look at verse 5. Behold, I have taught, Moses is teaching here, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Again, Moses is not teaching theoretically here. Moses is teaching from experience. Knowing that I physically won't go with you to the promised land, but to live a good life where God has given you. Hey, remember the teachings that I've given you. Teaching is so important. I love to preach. The people that know me, I love to preach the word of God. I love to open the word of God and proclaim the, the, the word of God with excitement and with exhortation and to worship and praise in the preaching of the gospel. But there has to be time set aside to teach, to break down what God says so we can have understanding and clarity on how to live in what God has given us to possess and how to enjoy and to enjoy it in the right way. Notice what he says. Behold, I have taught you. Thank God for teaching. I have taught you. That's why we have Bible study. I have taught you. That's why we have Sunday school that's going to come back real soon. I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. Look at verse 6. And I pray you're keeping your Bibles on. You know we always go verse by verse. And again, I must pause here just for this. If there are any questions, any concerns, contact the church, 423-266-0083 for any questions or concerns that we cover in the Word of God. So I, I want God's people to have clarity and understand it. Verse 6 of Deuteronomy chapter 4 says, Keep therefore and do them. Guard, the word keep means to guard them. Guard them, embrace them. Keep them therefore and do them. For this is, check this out, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of nations, those who don't believe, 
those who are going away, those who view what we do as traditional, and, and because we're doing it biblically, but notice what the Bible says, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statues and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now, not great in number, because the children of Israel, they weren't the greatest in number. Not great in territory. God gave them a land that belonged to somebody else. So it was it was territory that they conquered that God gave them. So they weren't greatest in territory, but what they were great in is God being their God who gave them the proper teaching, who gave them the proper ways, who gave them the proper statutes, who gave the proper judgment, who showed them mercy and great other nations who believed in other ways, they look at how God blesses his people and they have to say he's dead. They serve a great God. Even though they don't bow, they still have to acknowledge the God they serve. He's great. And their nation is made a great nation. Look at verse 7. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Love saints of God. Everybody don't have been been a part of the ecclesia. Everybody don't does not have what we have. They don't have the God in our in their lives like the God that's in our lives, as the Bible says, who's nigh unto us. I preach this on watch night Eve. Draw nigh to God. God will draw nigh to you. Come close to God. How do we do that? We adhere and we bow to the word of God and watch the closeness of God in your life protecting, watching over, keeping, leading, and guiding in all, as the Bible says, in all things that we call upon him for. Everything that we call upon. You call on him. I've called on him many times. I can't tell you the number of times of the things that I've called on the Lord for. You can't count the number of times that you call on the name of the Lord for. But has he always been there for the church of Jesus Christ, for the church of God? Yes, he has. He's always been there and he's always provided. He's always seen us through. Anytime, anything we call for that the Lord knew we needed, stood in need for, in, in need of, he provided. And then some things we didn't call for. Think about it. Some things we did not call for, God still gave to us. They didn't call for the promised land, but God gave it to them. We didn't have the promised land of eternity on our mind because from our mother's womb, we were, uh, we were, we were, we were shaken in sin, formed in iniquity. And God called us and gave us a mindset to call him when we were in need. Look at how gracious God is. Look at the blessed privilege we have belonging to God. And I'm using this as a reminder to remind us that we got to do better. As the people of God, if we belong to God, let's do better. We can call on God for anything we stand in need of. And he blesses. Have food, shelter, whatever we need, God provides. He's our Jehovah Jireh. That's the God we serve. Everybody didn't have that privilege. Everybody does not have that right. Look at it. verse 8. Reminds, he says, And what nation is there so great <laughs> that have statues and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set, which I present before you this day? Think about it. Look around. No other so-called religion. And don't just, don't ever acknowledge I'm religious. Religion is a way of life. Jehovah Witnesses are religion, religious. Uh, 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 Muslims, they are religious. Mormons, they are religious. Just being religious does not mean anything. That is a way of life, going through life. But thank God if you're saved, if you're a Christian, you've been called and you're covered by the blood of Christ, that's a blessing. He says again in verse 8 of Deuteronomy chapter 4, What nation is there so great Again, not about the numbers, not about what the possessions and material things that we have, 
What nation is there so great that have the statutes and the judgments so righteous as all this law? I, I did a sermon series on the names and meanings of, of Christ, Jehovah Sitkanu, the Lord our righteousness. The Lord has made us righteous. Jehovah Sitkanu has done for us in making us right when we were wrong. That's a blessing. Who has that? Who? What other group of assembly that's apart from Christ has that? They have to work to try to be righteous. They have to do this to try to be righteous. Jesus provided righteousness for us. Did for us what we could not do. What other nation? Whoever, who, who, what other group or assembly that's not a part of the body of Christ has that? And look at verse 9. Only take heed. That word only take heed. That, those, that phrase only take heed to thyself means to walk according to God's word. Only take heed to thyself. Walk according to God's word and not go away from God's word. Only take heed to thyself. I preached out of Philippians chapter uh, 2 uh, this, this past Sunday. Work out uh, your own salvation in fear and in trembling. You got to do it. You got to be thankful for yourself. You got to take heed for yourself. As the body of Christ, if you as an individual are saved, take heed. Take heed. Walk according to God's word. Don't go away from God's word. And the more of us that God gives us understanding, then we walk collectively together by taking heed of the word of God, not going away from the word of God. That's why I started off this Bible study giving thanks and gratitude to the Lord for those who God is sending this way on Sundays. There are many who consistent, been consistent all throughout 2021 over into 2022. Just consistent. Consistent in giving, tithing, and offering. Consistent in, in, in coming to worship and, and worshiping. And then I, I shared this with the church and I shared this with this, this group here in Bible study. Go to our Facebook page and scroll down. Thank God for an active church. A church that's doing, even in the midst of what's going on in the land with COVID, God is still allowing our church to be active in ministering and helping and, and aiding. That's what the church, the church never closes. It kills me when people say, our church closed. Closed? How are you going to close something that God opened? This is when the physical church structure, not the body of Christ, the body of Christ will never be closed. But the physical church will close when Christ comes back and destroy this land. I, I, I don't gather that and I don't understand that and don't want to gather and understand church closed because of COVID. Church closed because of this. That, that, that does not biblically make sense. You cannot close what God opened. He's the only one. Cause the Bible says he is the door. <laughs> he opens and closes. God does. And a man said, we got, no, 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 no. Now you being God. No. So I, I thank God for the saints that God has given comfort and trust and coming and worship. God is protecting his people. He's our protector. So take heed to yourself. Keep thy soul, yourself, diligently. I told you the word diligent means to show care and be conscientious. That's what diligently, be mindful. He says, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest thou depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. How can we teach our children and our grandchildren if we're not following the way of Christ? How can we tell our children? Go the way of Christ, follow the way of Christ, take heed to Christ, and we ourselves are not doing it. And, and so we wonder why there are masses of millenniums going away from the truth of God's word. Take heed for ourselves. They're watching, they see, we don't abide. We don't, we don't listen and take heed to God's word. But then we want to say, you ought to come to church, you ought to go, to, you ought to do this. But they're watching us. Look at verse, I read, only take heed to thyself, verse 9 again, and keep thy soul, yourself, diligent, conscientious, be mindful, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. And that's what happens. 
You don't take heed through the word of God. By constant study, you'll forget. For the Lord has shown you. When I look back, there's this song said, when I look back over my life and I think things over, you know how I can truly say that I'm blessed and I have a testimony? Because God keeps it before me in remembrance of what God has done in my life. I see it in my soul. The, the struggles God has brought me through. The dangers God has brought us through. All the difficult times. How do we get through that? It was God. And so to teach and instruct our children and our grandchildren and generations to come. They have to see that in us. Our testimony has to be true. That's why droves of millenniums are going away saying that's traditional because they don't, they see tradition, but they don't see biblical. There has to be a biblical presence and a biblical precedent in our lives to follow the order of God. Look at verse 10. Specifically, the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in horror. That's Mount Sinai. When the Lord said unto me, that word gather. That's why we're dealing with the church. That word gather means assemble. Those who are set apart. Those whom God has called out. The ecclesia. The, the church. He says, gather me the people together. God is speaking here. And I, God says, will make them hear my words. That they may learn to fear me, to have reverence, to be awestruck. That they may learn to fear, to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth. And that they may teach their children. We can't teach our children properly if we don't hear what God says. If we don't listen to the word of God if we don't hearken back up in verse 1 now therefore hearken O Israel how can we teach and instruct our children if we are not learning if we're not being educated if we're not being instructed and God himself says gather he said to Moses here at Mount Sinai when they had bowed to a, a, a golden calf a, calf a golden calf I'm saying as the Moses of greater friendship gather ourselves and hearken to the word of God how do we gather? we gather on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock to hear what does today at the Lord so we can teach our children even in the midst of what's going on you still here this day aren't you? you still living this day aren't you? you still physically alive this day? it's amazing how we say this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it but go away from the word of God go away from the worship of God go away from gathering are you a part of the ecclesia or not God knows he knows he's omniscient look at verse 11, 12, 13 and 14 as we close and ye came near and stood under the mountain and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heavens with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. That's the presence of God on Mount Sinai when God was giving Moses the Ten Commandments. Look at verse 12. And the Lord spake unto you. They heard him. They could audibly hear what God was saying. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words. But you saw no similitude. There was no form of God. They heard, but there was no form. They saw the fire. They saw the smoke. They saw the dark thickness. They saw the cloud. They heard the voice of God speak from the fire. You heard them. You heard them. Every time God opens the word of God, he allows the preacher to stand in that pulpit to open the word of God. That's the voice of God. How can you hear without a preacher? That's the voice of God. How can he preach unless God sends him? If God sends him, he's going to speak to him. And he's speaking as the very oracles, the Bible says. The oracles of God. The voice of God. Gather. Come together to hear what God says. He's reminded them, you stood at the base, at the foot of Mount Sinai, and heard. You didn't. On Sunday mornings, we don't see the similitude of God. We don't see a form of God. But we hear from the word of God. That's why we open our Bibles. Right now, you're hearing from God through his messenger, through his servant. You're hearing the voice of God. That's why we're going verse by verse 
to share what God said. Not what Anthony Williams says, but what God says. So he says in verse 12 again, And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. Verse 13. And he declared unto you, that's God, his agreement, his covenant, which he commanded you <laughs> to perform, to do, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon the two tables of stone. He's reminding them. And again, notice, you better catch this in verse 13. God declared unto you his agreement, which he commanded you and I to perform, to do. God commanded everything. This is why I'm at friendship as I close in verse 14. Everything that comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth from the authority of God. God alone. And, and there are those who can say that's a traditional church. We're a biblical church. We're a Bible church. We stand to the teachings, the statutes, the precepts, the judgments of God. God has saved us. He's made us righteous. We don't go away from the word of God. We don't add to the God. We don't diminish anything from God's word. We stick with the word of God as written. And as God gives me the authority and the power and the mindset and the servitude, that's what I'm going to do. Lastly, verse 14. And the Lord commanded me, Moses says, at that time, check this out, to teach you the statutes and the judgment. Why? That ye might do them, observe them, perform them in the land, whether ye go over to possess it. God has given us this. This earth is going to be destroyed. But God has given his body, the people of God, the authority to possess it. God has did. He's done that. That's why Christian ain't no such. You can't be weak and timid. Look what God has done. He's given us the land. I was sharing with a brother not too long ago. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. It's plenty. This is our Lord has given us this land to possess. And we act so weak and timid as if God has not done anything for us. How soon we forget. Christians, church, body, assembly, gathering. We ought to be rememberers, thinkers, and remembers. Think on what the Lord is teaching us from the word of God, instructing us. And as he instructs us, let's do it. Last week's lesson coincides with this lesson. Not only a hearer, but a doer. Let's perform. And I'm not talking about performing in, 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 in entertainment. No, 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 no. I'm talking about doing our action. Our actions should be indicative of whom we believe in and who has made us righteous and who has us protected. And, and it, it ain't just, it, it's not a bunch of talk. It's our conduct. It's our walk. Let's do what thus saith the Lord. Lord has blessed us this day and who knows how many days to come, but every day, Let's abide and adhere to the teachings and the instruction as the ecclesia, the church of God, in accordance to the word of God. The Lord bless you. I pray that the lesson was clear this Wednesday night Bible study. Hope to see you this coming Sunday in God's house. This third Sunday of January, third Sunday in, in January. Hope to see you here. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your teachings. Thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, you have used your vessel, your instrument to present your word clearly, to instruct clearly. And as, as so, Lord, I pray that all that is looking in, that is a part of this Bible study, that, Lord, you will give ears to hear. And then as you have given spiritual ears to hear, given the spiritual awareness and the spiritual, spiritual unction to do, to perform. To go forth, Lord, to possess what you've given us. You've given it to us. Now lead us, Lord. Guide us. Direct us. Lord, we who are a part of the ecclesia, the gathering, the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, we say thank you for the righteousness you have imparted to us through Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, we repent of our lack of obedience in times past. And we pray, Lord, that you will inspire us to be obedient and obey what thus saith the Lord. Thank you for salvation through Jesus Christ. Lord, for by grace are we saved through faith and not of ourselves. It's nothing we can brag and boast about. You did it all. Jesus Christ paid it all. All to him we owe. Thank you, Jesus, for making us a part of the church of God, the ecclesia, 
the gathering of called out. We bless your holy name. Lord, whatever I have omitted in this prayer, I pray for all the sick, shut in, all that's going through a difficult time. I lay everything at the feet of Jesus Christ. And I pray this prayer in the name of Jesus and for Jesus' name's sake. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.